So the Lord, again, for everything that we go through, the Lord has a remedy for. Oh, he does. You know, and that's the beauty of him, because he came to set right. the captives free. And, um, you know, and, I, and that I'm grateful for. So how did you, in your book, uh, what's your new book? Um, so you go more into, was it the, the prophetic? The prophetic. Okay. Yeah, it's called Prophetic Secrets, Learning Language of Heaven. I've been teaching the prophetic, you know, much like yourselves, uh, just for years and years and years. And so, um, you know, that was probably my easiest book to write because I had just so been in this forever. Um, but it really, you know, takes you, like you can be a beginner and you, or you can be um, already immersed in it and you're, you're going to learn. Because right. um, I go from the simple to the, into the depths, you know, the you know, simple prophecy, right straight into what happens if an angel shows up and gives you right. a message? Uh, what do you do with that, you know? How do you communicate, you know, things that you got in, in a more mystical way so people can you? Um, you know, uh, what are some of the heresies that are um, neutering the impact of the prophetic in our in our modern prophetic movement? Um, you know, just really getting into all of that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited about it because I've always wanted to language, um, uh, plain language, the more mystical edges of the prophetic and say, okay, um, you know, here it is in the Bible, and this is how we would communicate that so that people don't freak out on you when you have a weird experience. Right. But it's God. You know? yeah. well, that's another thing I really liked yeah. about you. You are training people all the time, yeah. and you have the online courses. So, you know, you'll take people at different stages of their growth in the Lord, and you'll help walk them through that. You're, you're equipping people, not just, you know, using the gift yourself and just writing books about it. So could you talk a little bit about that, about how somebody that, that's watching can tap into some online courses or uh, I remember you said you were doing a school right, right when COVID yeah. hit. So what's that part of your ministry? Well, um, I have institutes here at the church uh, every six months, but they're always online. So you can register online or you can register to come on campus. Um, our next one is going to be the Sears and Prophets Institute in October. And that's with Sean Smith, Trish King, myself. Um, and, you know, it's so uh, I also do an online mentorship. We just I mean, we're just closing that today. So I had I hesitate to even mention it. But that's at Jennifer Evaz online dot com. Um, uh, you know, or you go to Jennifer Evaz dot com and just hit the online school. Um, but that's my year long school. I do it all online. Uh, but I have lots of YouTube videos, just little nuggets of stuff. Um, Facebook, I'm always teaching on Facebook, little things. And so so um, everything I do is pretty much, you know, that oriented that way, right. you know, for the most part. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really important because people want to know what the next steps should be. And that's part of right. that diligent seeking and God rewards it. Yeah. The spiritual warfare that you were talking about does confuse a lot of people. So that's one that can put fear into people when they hear it. So it really needs to be, you know, approached uh, in a healthy biblical way that, you know, yeah. the Lord makes all things work together for good to those that love him. And, you know, I just don't want people under this assumption that, oh, if I grow in the Lord, I'm going to get attacked greater. Right. Like, you yeah. know, like that where yeah. I don't know how that formula ever got developed, but you know, the devil wants to take us all out <laughs> all the time. Right. I realize that if they could smite the shepherd, the, the flock will scatter. But, but we also grow in our gifting and we grow in our immune system and, you know, our minds are, are renewed. So it's not something yeah. to be afraid about. It's something to occupy, right? We're here to occupy until he comes yeah. and take our place on the wall and not retreat from the battle. I love uh, Eleazar, his, his hand stuck to the sword. You know, he was fighting for so yeah. long that it says that his hand stuck to the sword and and Israel got a great victory when everybody else was retreating. You know, he hung in yeah. there and did what the Lord right. told him. So that's the position that we have to take. We're not perfect. We're not Jesus, but we represent him. And he right. equips us and he gave us authority. Yeah. And it's not something to back down and fear over. Now, I, right. I, I believe that God is raising up, you know, he spoke to me, a, you know, a while ago, like 10 years ago. And he said that he is raising up his, his uh, end time, you know, Gideon 300 army. And I believe the remnant, he is raising us up and going through what we're all going through. You know, God ha God's shaking all of us. He's shaking the church. He's shaking us individually. He's shaking us all. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, but, but God is calling us, the ecclesia, the called out ones, to legislate 
in ways that we never thought we could. And, yeah. you know, I know there's that remnant that knew it, but God wants the church at large to rise up and to recognize we are a united force to be reckoned yeah. with. And that when we catch that revelation of our identity, not because we're so special, because he's so special and we are righteous mm -hmm. in him and that he's given us that authority. And it's like this sword coming out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're decreeing that word, you know, the voice of the Lord shatters. So we're his voice. We're his mouthpiece. And, and that we can shift things. You know, I, I was thinking of uh, in one of your books, you spoke about when you um, started to pastor the church you're in. In that particular, in your church, there were generational issues that needed to get delivered, but also yeah. in your city. So yeah. you utilized, you, you, you know, you learned and discerned how to apply that. Could you give a little background, a little, you know, information about what took place there? Because there was total deliverance and breakthrough that took place. Absolutely. It really is amazing to me what, what the climate of our city is now compared to what it was 20 years ago. Now, um, I don't want to promise anyone instant stories. I love those stories where people have like instant revival and everything happens like overnight. We were more just, um, you know, steady eddies, you know, right, <laughs> just, yeah. you know, just, just week in, week out, um, yeah. staying consistent in prayer, um, you know, um, just, just that kind of thing. And then uh, walking out the things that the Lord would show us as they came up, because, you know, uh, he knows the, the timing, he knows what's ready and those kind of things. And so there were on occasion, uh, he would reveal to us uh, a territorial spirit in our city that was, in, that was affecting our city. And typically what would happen is for, for me anyway, um, given my role here and it makes sense is, uh, the Holy spirit would pick a fight with this demon through me and forget to tell me you know, that that's what he's doing. I just would know I'd be embroiled in something <laughs> and, and, and I would know what it is, but I like, I wouldn't get a heads up or anything. And when I say these kind of things, you have to recognize that I've been through extraordinary spiritual warfare. So I'm not afraid of the devil. Right. Okay. So I'm not afraid of spiritual warfare because I know that the Lord will always reward you, right. um, you know, stick it out, get the victory and he will reward you. That's his pattern. That's revelations two twenty six. You overcome, you get nations, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so I'm just not afraid of the devil. It's just more of, it's more of how do I deal with this one? Right. You know, cause, cause every territorial spirit, um, that's not the same as spirits that possess people per se. It's more they possess regions and impact whole groups of people to stop and thwart them from, from receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ or the fullness of the blessing of God. That's really the intent. And so, um, so, you know, he started walking me, which meant us at the church, our intercessors, he started walking me through these things. And I would, I would have these battles, spiritual battles, um, over different parts of the city. Um, uh, for example, the first one I, I really encountered, all it was is I started praying on Saturday nights with the team and I started having this vice grip on my head and I couldn't figure out why I was having this vice grip on my head every time I prayed. And it was getting, I mean, it was so, it, it wasn't just uncomfortable. It was like, this is ridiculous. I can't, I can't, keep doing this. Right. And then the Holy Spirit gave me discernment. And he said, you are dealing with an occultic spirit, territorial spirit, not one that possessed a person, but an actual territorial spirit in the north side of your city he told me where. And, and I'm like, okay, you know, and, and um, that side of the city was completely barren. It wasn't developed, nothing, it's just fields. Mm. It's just completely dark, yeah. you know, nothing there. And so um, I started just having this war and then it kept getting more severe, more severe, more severe. And I remember one night in the middle of the night, I was contending with it, um, just interceding, decreeing, just, you know, what intercessors do. And um, I felt like I wasn't winning that battle. <laughs> so I really felt like it was going to take me out. Um, and so some very weird stuff happened um, that particular night. I felt my spirit leave my body and go beg for intercession for some of my intercessor families, <laughs> you know, and, and, um, uh, it was a very weird experience. And then, um, I actually checked with them that Sunday cause it was so real. And one of them said, yeah, your spirit showed up in my room and I knew that wasn't normal. Mm. And so I knew I had to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And so she did. <laughs> and so, you know, I just don't show up, you know, I don't <laughs> throw my spirit into somebody's house. It's just kind of weird. But that's, that's what happened. That's, you know, it's, it is what it is. But anyway, um, long story short, um, we were fasting and praying. And during that season of fasting and praying, right around that time frame, I felt a breakthrough. 
Okay. Now I know a lot of people say that I fought with the territorial spirit over New York and I defeated it. I'm like, really prove it. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) That's me. I was like, if it really happens, there's proof. Mm -hmm. And so what had happened was within a year, that side of the city came under uh, construction, all of it, every bit of it got constructed. There's houses, businesses, schools, everything. We got a house over there uh, on that side of the city. And then uh, later, um, but, and there was some additional um, intercession and spiritual warfare attached to it. But later, we got a, a church facility given to us on that yeah. side of the city. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's proof. Yeah. Okay? Right. Yeah. 